and be that frontliner, tank some stuff up, but uh, need someone else to go in with him and help provide the control. It's funny how we talk about Rezo being kind of a carry player, and he has certainly had some incredible carry performances at this tournament from the off lane. But at the same time, he's also had some performances with Zayats where they're just running around together. Oh, yeah. uh, it seems to be, I've, I don't think I've ever seen a duo of the three, four that is more tied together than Rezo and Zayats. They seem to be just hand in hand, uh, running around, killing things nonstop. Now, when it comes to lanes, they didn't Not actually set you. it up that way. We see Puppy playing the Disruptor. They didn't want to do a double melee setup. Instead, they have Zayats paired up with the Draw Ranger in bottom lane and the ranged Puppy here with uh, Rezo, just to make their lanes a bit easier. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> Running this double melee lane into the Morphling, you're not going to be able to pressure him too much, and you're just going to feel bad over time, so at least Puppy can make some some noise up here, you know, get some, a little stuff done. And then you get this uh, melee range pairing for the Drow, which is always nice for this hero. You have a body to frontline for and tank up some spells, that's the name of the game. And this is going to be a pretty fast early game for Thunder. Whenever you play this Mars mid, you are really looking to up the tempo and take the fights around the runes with the early arena. You have this offlane Pango, who's another very strong skirmisher, especially when paired with this Maiden, who also went in the offlane. Kind of a throwback to that old four position Maiden meta. Of course, Pandamu is still bringing it up. Very high damage supports for Thunder Awaken. Snapfire Maiden on the back of these two skirmishes. Yeah, at the same time, though, these two team fighters they're in a lane matchup where they're a melee hero up against a ranged hero that yep. is going to abuse them. Uh, so we'll definitely have to keep an eye on both their CS and their net worth to see how they walk away from this laning phase, because I imagine they're going to have to be blown through some regen just to stay in. All about the early level advantage for these dual lane skirmishes. Matthew going to lay into Puppy here a little bit in the river. I mean, he has the move speed advantage. Oh, yeah. He should just, just be able to run him, him down. down here. Puppy, at best, you can try and maybe swerve into the Roshan pit and hopefully deny that first blood. He's going to pop the Fairy Fire, pops the Sal, oh, draws awkward. the aggro, gets the Sal canceled. A bash comes out. That's a little oh, awkward. Whoa. Oh, Matthew times it very nicely with the cookie. He had that one in his back pocket, pulls it out, and uh, gets the first blood. Yeah, the tip on top of it as well with the voice line. He was thinking that all the way through, had plenty <laughs> of time to think about it. And very nice start for him. Again, that's your four position in the safe lane. Matthew, he's shown on this Snapfire. It's a South American specialty. Absolutely destroy you in these fights until you get to those BKB timings. So yeah, you were talking about this hero uh, early on in the tournament. You thought Snapfire was going to be one of the heroes that was going to be a bit more prevalent, and you said South America was one of the regions who played it best. Yeah, I mean, this hero's just amazing in the mid-game fights. He, he scales as well as well. This new shard, I think, threw people a little off in terms of how the range interacts, but people are getting more used to it now. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pick it up this game. Again, the laning's pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, a little mango smoothie form. Yeah. Regen it back up. Matthew just wants to keep that pressure up. I mean, because of having a totally free lane. Uh, though he's not actually stopping Renzo from doing well in CS. They're pretty much even between the two of them, so. That is the downside of chasing Puppy. You get the first blood, you enable yourself. You do give you do give Rezo that one-on-one. -on -one. He's had to burn pretty much no region. I think he's used one tango this entire laning phase. For a melee versus range core matchup, sure, Morphling's not the best at abusing you early. Rezo's having a great time, and he's gonna now go they're going for it. the kill. Jumps onto Matthew. And the damage being done with the Thunder Strike, and one last hit is barely enough for Puppy to get the kill. kill. Oh, and because of that, he's got his level two. He'll get pop the glimpse now because he's already morphing his strength, so he should be totally fine. But it's decent pressure added on to the carry. And that right click, it definitely hit at the top of the damage range there. Yeah, he had fairy fire. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to kill him, and uh, I don't think Matthew did either. I was setting it up to be like, oh, and he barely doesn't get the kill. And yeah. well, apparently not. for the arcane boots. That was pretty much a dream offlane Pango start. Yeah. I mean, this is not a hero that typically just free farms a lane like this. Maybe abusing the back drow is kind of slow. Nice rolling kick back straight into the hands of Nisha. He may be able to grab the invis rune away from Nisha, but won't stop his own death. And I think Thunder, tired of being the ones rolled on here. Situation. Do you yeah, think that they oh, there's have a glimpse answers to drow? Here. There is. He's going to run forward, gets a small glimpse back. Not a big one, but they do have the stun follow up here. Comes this kisses. Trying to create some space in Dark Mago. He's going to be perfectly fine. And they're actually at the Rolling Thunder. Oh, a jump away from Rezo. Barely gets out of that arena. They're going to have more TPs in. Chrysalis actually a long TP, but Another will show up and two. miss. One second. Oh, barely inside of the range. And they're going to go for Sacred. 
Pango's gonna die. They immediately threw down the Static Storm to make sure there was going to be no jump away, no swashbuckle or anything. And with the Draw Ranger here, it's taking a pretty good window here of your Thunder. Mech is pretty effective versus the Earth Spirit and the Disruptor damage. That's gonna look for the roll. Yeah, the Static Storm on top of this one. Mars really not gonna be able to get off much, but the Rolling Thunder is really disrupting things. They finally kill the Mars, and Matthew, nice jump away with the cookie. Zion's finally falls, Sacred has to jump away, and barely keeps his life there as Rezo looks to chase, but uh, a yeah, blink. A little extra in the formula. <laughs> it's seen because Morphling before. It's, it's the because factor, understandable. It really is. I mean, I think for the next five or so minutes, that's a short window, but their skirmish power is still stronger. It, but it's dependent on bursting Nisha, and uh, yes, Nisha has no fear in this game. Yeah, he's got Bam Brace, he's got Cloak, Ogre Axe, he is rushing the tank ability. He knows, I'm a run-in, I'm a front cause to be able to deal the physical to bring this Lashrak down. And he went kind of defensive items, right? Yeah. He doesn't have this super early Scotty or the extra damage to pump through. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. oh no, he blinked into him! Oh no! Disaster! It was hidden in the side, but ends up blinking directly into Zayat. That is just a uh, real Not sad, an easy fight for Thunder. They're gonna try and start with the stuns. No BKB for Rezo. Yeah, they're gonna be able to keep this nice chain stun. Rezo is decently tanky, off, but though. maybe not good enough. Okay, the BKB goes right through those arena walls, and now with the disruptor here, they can pull some more heroes in, or maybe not. Puppy misses Static Storm and is now gonna be able to get a glimpse on Crystal Main. Not much there. Nisha's just running through heroes though, one after another. Dark Mago, look at him with the TP out. No, Rezo denies. And he comes back in for fresh blood as Panda, well, good try, my friend. Does what damage he can, but ultimately will not be able to stand toe-to-toe -to, -toe to Nisha's firepower. All of Thunder going to try and retreat here. Fortunately, there is no Disruptor up anymore, so everyone else is going to be able to ground here. He might break it. There is a ping from Matthew. Going to break it for sure. Cause on the river. Wow, look at them. They're actually sneaking around science here. Might be able to find the right kind of initiation. They get Rezo first off. They're going to get the spear immediately after. Towards this time around, they chain stun him down. Zayas trying to get on top of Matthew. At the same time, look for Chrysalis as well. He's playing the back line. Looks like he's getting out of there. But Nisha's going in there with his Bloodstone and his Aegis. He's ready to fight. He's ready to bring down the Mars. The spear goes off. The last bit of damage isn't quite there. Meanwhile, they're playing away from Nisha at all costs. Everybody else running away from the last strike and killing anybody else they can get their hands on. Now, with a buyback coming out from the Snapfire, they can try and go again here. See if they can kill Nisha twice. Chrysalis might be needed to help out. A roll in. Immediately silence. Pop Samantha, but it's too much. Pecan gets first and down. He didn't expect that one. The spear goes out. Getting him low, but without the Morphling, now they've lost so much of their damage. Now it's Secret who are on the hunt, but they don't really have. Oh, well, maybe they do. The point dagger forward from Nisha is going to be able to slow down and get one more. That's Panda. Crystal Maiden controls one part of the map. Thunder invading into Secret's side. They don't have the right vision here. Matthew, his smoke breaks. He's going to blow it the side. Sacred, he's fishing in deep, but they're not going to find anything. Oh, knocked no! Down. Knocked him down to the low ground, and now the back line is being assaulted as Nisha crept through the stairs, gets on top of the two supports, annihilates them. Rezu is keeping the Morphling busy, so that Morphling isn't going to be doing anything here. Pulled back in. He's going to have to use his BKB. That's going to be another charge down. A spear goes out, but the stun landed. That's the Mar caught as well, Darfago. He falls, three deaths. Yeah, this time it's Thunder who have set up in a part of the map and oh, are Dark waiting Bago. for secret. Oh, Darfago, don't get caught now. Gets stunned up, follow up, chain stun. He's, he's already dead and they've already stopped the snap bar from being able to do much. Nisha gets on top of Mahanamu, should be pretty easily there. But Kaz is trying to keep his supports alive, whoever's still left alive inside of Thunder and get them out of here. But the chase goes on, his resolution looks to be able to chase back with the buybacks coming in. Maybe they can catch something. Oh, no, Seeker is annihilated. They do have the arena though. The they caught the drow, all important because lays in the damage and that is Chrysalis dead. Immediate buyback though, as Thunder need to be able to retreat out. They've got this Wraith pack. Maybe because doesn't feel so bad about this. I feel like he's going to see something and just go. He's going to blink, scythe, BKB, and, you know, chainsaw, whatever. Oh, this would be a perfect opportunity. Kill the enemy carry, the best pickup possible. 90 seconds, no buyback, and they know it too. Yeah, they saw that. 20% evasion could do a lot. Asher for sacred. So a little more BKB control as well. Are they going to find that ward? Oh, not no, the they're heads. not. They're going to get initiated on first. Nisha, not even bothering to blow the BKB. He knows this is an initiation that Thunder cannot follow up on.
Quick pressure, oh, jumping again. in, Blink Dagger immediately goes for the grab. Panda Moo's gonna be first. They still have a rolling out on Saber. He needs to be able to jump away. They managed to get the hex of the Morphling with the Wall of Suns, and they're chaining him down. That is just a dead Morphling. Dark Mago did what he could to stop Chrysalis's damage, but ultimately it's the Lashrak who wins the fight. And now they will chase down for as many heroes as possible. Rezo getting up and under. That snap fire, triple kill for Chrysalis. Add another one on the mix. Panda Moo roasted by Nisha and the fire and flames is now Team Secret. Are they gonna Look continue to, to assault and see if Thunder is gonna try and take the fight? I mean, this is level 25. This is five. Level 25 die ball healing. They got the initiation, but this time got the morph off strength. Can they keep him changed on? Can the damage get enough? He's getting blown up for the BKB. He goes off the way for him over the side. Because it's reset. Science chases after him, but it's already done. Because is healthy enough that Science will be the victim instead. Dark Mago chasing after them, but he's got to be careful. Doesn't want to overextend. They have the buyback. Sacred's coming back in, but Dark Mago's already dead. Rolling Thunder on up. They cannot let Team Secret walk away with this. Because is coming back. He's TPing in. But sadly, I don't think they can chase after this. You could see Matthew setting up with his Aghanim Scepter. They wanted to keep going, but now Another Nisha hex. seeing them on the retreat with the Rolling Thunder on cooldown. There's the Hex. Resolution also catching that snap fire. Sacred is still alive. Never mind. Rezo grabs him, tosses him back in, turns up into that rolling form, but blink away. He's good. No physical damage came out. Team so maybe Secret. Maybe just the, the smarter play here. Puppy with the smoke. The air will jump anything and everything. Nisha goes in, blind blink in, goes for the site, immediately fights a Pango. A huge opportunity. Two dead already. Two dead with Thunder. When you have the Aghanim Scepter, because now you could solo initiate team fights instead of following up Rezos. Too many things to think about here for Thunder. One war gets placed, one hero gets spotted. Ooh, the waveform charges. The Kaz jumps in, jumps out. Dark Mago pops his BKB. They get a decent initiation with the Crystal Mane on top of that thanks to the Sapphire. They're doing lots of damage. The BKBs, though, are allowing them to persevere. Because turning into the Drow Ranger has to keep his distance from Resolution. The badges are too much. He needs to get on top of the Drow Ranger, but he turns into stone form. Science saving the Drow, kicks him across. Because on the hunt has to wave for him forward. He desperately wants the skill for the man to dodge. Another hit miss. Now the Scythe. Now the turn around. And there it is. Because gets blown up. And immediately the GG is called. Team Secret will take game one in this upper bracket match. They put the Bacaz Morphling to bed a little bit there. Did not feel like the Thunder aggression could come out in that game at all. Just clinical gameplay from Secret. The Rune controlled, the Roche controlled.